it's a, it's a good time to remind people that Mal did nothing wrong. <laughs> 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 I'm about, as radical, should, I'm about you, as radical as it comes, my brother. You guys should put that on a t-shirt. You should sell that. That would be good. You should sell that as a t-shirt. That would be oh, good yeah, on your merch sure. I'm going to hit Aaron up right now. I'm going to text Aaron <laughs> right now. We need, that, we need that shirt of me, <laughs> especially shirt. after this situation. Now they didn't do a goddamn thing wrong because now yeah. they evicted my brother. They, now I want you guys to think about it like this. You should print they that on a coffee mug, brother. too. They evicted a member of the RBN family for profit because i think based on the conversation i heard they, uh his landlord wanted to sell he want to make a little more profit you guys see how why it's, why it's not a good idea to have crucial critical infrastructure the hand of capitalists this is why mao and many people was right banning landlords or why there's not landlords in china seemed like a good idea there <laughs> aren't like, any it landlords like a in china idea. well so is, is there anything how, how does that work there what was that how does that the work? Bank, uh, yeah, the, the bank is seized it. by the government. It's the banks is publicly owned, and they control the the prices of housing. You know the rent control that landlords in this country claim will ro uh, will rob them of their freedom, the freedom to make housing unaffordable. That's why in China, housing prices are around four hundred to five hundred dollars uh, a bucks a month in China, and they make around forty nine thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. in the United States money. Housing is a very small amount. Of how of what China pays. Meanwhile, it's literally about a third of what Americans make in their income. Is it hang really on, free? On, but when somebody buys a house there, like it, like that, that is a business where, say, you own an office building in theory, right, and rent it out to people. Like, how does that work there? Uh, I'm not. The, the, I the government. Sure I I, I just know the I don't know the the exact mechanism, but I just know the government control the pricing and the housing because they own the banks because the banks usually loan out. But in China, right, they right, own right. the banks and they control the housing prices in each individual area. Obviously, in 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 cities like Shanghai, the the price is around seven hundred, eight hundred bucks, which is nothing compared to the sure, cities yeah. in the United States. But by having a central planning model where housing prices are actually controlled, instead of having being like anarchy where landlords. You had the, the mercy of the landlords, like what happened with JB, where they can just sell and make you homeless. It, it's undeniable that one system where you have a central planning model based on what the government is regulating is much better than this anarchy. Well, especially in places like me, New uh, York, where forty percent of the apartments are regulated and sixty aren't, because then that fucks with this with, with the supply numbers and makes the prices even more chaotic and even more unaffordable. I think New York. I think the average New York rent just now is another over 2000 a month. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's I, I always crazy tell people, Chicago, too. I would not move here now. Like, just walking in the door, forget about it. But mm -hmm. I'm in the same building for 17 years, and my apartment's regulated. I'm not paying market rent. I'm paying the. I'm paying $70 more than I was paying in 1995. That's why I'm here. Let, let, if I were paying market rent, there's no fucking way. There's no way. All right, let me let me get through just this announcement for JB so we can get to the to the see the first topic, which is uh uh supreme censorship under the Biden administration. But just so people know who JB is, JB is going through this while at the same time being disabled and having having to regularly raise funds for that. This is his his uh uh GoFundMe for that. In the middle of him finding this out, guess what he was doing. He was raising funds for unhoused people to go do something for unhoused people. Hmm. And he's still doing it, regardless of this that's happening to him. He this is today he's retweet, he's tweeting this. So he's still doing it, even regardless of the situation he is in, where he's wait, raising money to get toiletries and ponchos for those that are unhoused in Florida. So this is this is the state uh of a collapsing empire and what's what they what it does, how it grinds people up. But with a support system that hopefully we have, we're, we're able to um, help him stay above water because this this stuff is just literally just helping to stay above water. Nobody's getting rich off of trying to get low income housing. So yeah. we'll, plug able to the cash we'll, we'll plug we'll plug that cash app on the show tomorrow. We have a morning stream. Tomorrow. Yes. And, yeah, I'll be sure to post that as well. Yeah, this is a different like one. If. This is for unhoused. If you want to contribute to the Orlando RBN where he's raising money for unhoused, you see it on on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then I showed you earlier the one for his housing. Yeah, um, for his cash app. I took a picture. So I'll, yes, um, we'll absolutely. Make sure we All right. Put that so go ahead. Somebody was going to 
Go ahead, Nick. You were going to chime in. I was, I, I, and this is the reality of what we have to deal with. This is the reality of what the workers I deal with in this country. Because I covered maybe a year and a half ago how you have a rise of homeless disabled people. There are disabled, uh, there's a massive uptick in homeless disabled people because the benefits that disabled people are receiving, especially in states like Florida and rest states like in Missouri, is not, not only is not match, uh, keeping up with inflation and not keeping up with how much landlords are increasing their rent. Like we've seen massive rent spikes over the last four years, especially landlords taking advantage of COVID. Cause you gotta know that would, that would capitalists do. They take advantage of disaster and make massive profits. Right. So not only do you have massive uh, divestment in social services, you have those social services who are not keeping up with inflation. And then you have landlords that uh, that increase rent on top of that. This has led to a drastic spike in disabled homeless people. It's one of those things where capitalists are like, well, if you don't want to be homeless, why don't you work? Well, these people are disabled. These are the people that are being abandoned by our government. Now, we helped JV raise money before, and we are in a position where we are forced to do this again. But what kind of unhinged system is this? How many disabled people are going to have a giant community known as RBN to have their back? You guys yeah. see the dysfunction in this system where mm -hmm. housing is controlled based on the whims of someone who want to make profit? It's absurd. So, of course, I'm going to be upset about that. And, of course, I'm going to allow this situation to further radicalize me. I think it's absurd, and I will always have this position. It's absurd to have capitalists controlled critical infrastructure unregulated. It's absurd. Mm-hmm. Same thing's happening here in Chicago too. The uh, you know New York City is being ex is is an expensive place to live in. Chicago as well. And uh, we had our primary, and there was a ballot initiative in our state <clears throat> called "Bring Chicago Home." <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And it uh, failed miserably. There was um, a twenty percent voter turnout for our state election or for our state primary. And the purpose of it was was to tax the uh, more affluent rich properties in downtown Chicago, mm -hmm. and it never uh, it, it just it won the the politicians and people supporting it. Their message was wasn't coherent enough, and it wasn't loud enough. And and number two, um, there's always that question and concern of well, who's going to be running it? And unfortunately, even if it's a good thing, there's always that uh, uh, snake of Chicago politics intertwining and wrapping itself around it. So that's another thing. And now a lot of Chicagoans, you know, there's a rise of tent cities and people living underneath bridges and buildings being vacant all over the south and west side neighborhoods of Chicago. And with, with housing being so expensive now, they should have to give you more than 60 days notice if they're selling the building and forcing you to move. Yeah. Because it take it costs a few thousand dollars to move now because yeah. you got to put yeah. down the, the mm -hmm. security for the new place. Some places charge you first and last plus the security. So you got to pay three months some places. I don't know what it's like in Orlando. In the suburbs of New York City, it's customary. You put down first month, last month, and security. So you got to have three months. In the city, it was only security in first month when I lived there. But it I don't depends. know what it's like in Orlando. It depends. But, a lot of times it is first, last, and security. Yeah, so that's triple. So you got to come up yeah. with three months worth of rent. Oh, Who yeah. has three months oh, worth yeah. of rent hanging around sure. where they can come up with that in 50 days? Well, especially, it's ridiculous. Especially you should have to give rent. at least six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hang on. So it got expensive in Chicago? Because when I was living there as a New Yorker, I was like, damn, this is dirt cheap. Price still oh, is no, relative. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it, 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 the prices are rising up well, all over what's, the city. What's your average rent over there now? Um, Depending on which day. Obviously, if you're on the north side, it's going to be expensive, like 2100 maybe 2200 Uh, South side of Chicago, give or take maybe 1800 1500 That's a low ball in it. Um, but it, that's, it, a it, it, that's a two-bedroom? Uh, no, I, I think that's a one-bedroom. That's a one-bedroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they're, they're, they're I think here. all of these metropolitan places are pretty similar. Um, there are some areas in New York and California definitely that's higher than even the state norm. So that LA is, is insane, absolutely true. Yeah. And, and plus, yeah, it's insane over here. Plus, it's insane. Plus, as 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 for downtown Chicago, I, I, I'm not gonna give a number, but I will say that it's uh, probably insanely high because that's high value property and you right, have to, right. you, 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 you have to you have to come from money or do a lot of side hustle to uh uh be earning the kind of big bucks to live in the oh, area. they're gonna force us. Yeah. yeah. So they're gonna go. force us. This is the system's way of forcing you into these jobs that you hate for decades. This is the system how it works. But gentlemen, we do have to get back on track. Any last comments? I don't want to cut off the entire thing, but 
let's close it um, here. Any final comments on this? I, I think Nick was kind of chiming in or, or itching to, to say something. Nick, did you want to say something? You brought up something on the screen yeah. that you want to <laughs> shout it out real quick. Oh, no, you guys know I always show receipts. So I was showing the receipts. The headline I had on the, on up had said, and I covered this a while ago, high rent out, outpaced federal disability payments, leaving many homeless. So that's that's what happened to JB like last time we had to raise money, and that's what many Americans mm -hmm. are facing right now. Right. Well, in, in New York, we have it to such an extreme that sadly, I must say, you get desensitized to it. When I when I was in Europe in September, mm. I came back and I saw how desensitized I was because I spent a month not seeing that. You just get used to not seeing that. And then as soon as you come back to New York, it's freaking homeless people, mentally ill people around you all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. You get on the subway at least half the time. There's someone who needs help on that car. Yep, and that was the same thing. You you block it out after a while, man. But then if you get out of the pool and then you come back, you notice how dirty the water is. Yeah, I had I had that uh, revelation like when I came back before the lockdowns when I was in Japan, just how crazy right, Chicago's right. infrastructure is. But also, you know, when, even even when you are like not using public transportation, because I, I I was uh, I went downtown like first time a long time using the CTA and. I was surprised to see the amount of homeless people and people who clearly had mental health issues who were on the train, literally making a loud scene where like a couple of years ago, even that wouldn't have happened, but it was so prevalent. It was everywhere. And, and, and there were so many tents, like even on the streets, even in the parks. And you're wondering how did this happen? And is this acceptable? Is this going to be our new norm? Like we're living in the skeletal remains of this dying empire. Is this is this what the Romans yep. felt as uh, as before before the empire completely collapsed? Because we we are we uh, are the better days truly behind us. And unfortunately, I have mm. to say, yeah, it is after what I've been seeing and what what you've been talking about, Russell. Traveling around right. the uh, traveling around the country the last few months. I mean, that's what I've seen. I I, I compare it to uh, you ever see Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm, you remember, no, it, well, me. in that, that movie, Jim Carrey, he's like in his memory and he's going from memory to memory because all the memories are being taken away. And he's trying to he's trying to go into the bubble of that memory before it disappears. And then he's got to run to another one. That's what it feels like going around the country right now. It's like, oh, man, I want to see New Orleans before it's gone. Oh, man, I want to experience L.A. before it's gone. Everything feels like it's just a bubble collapsing in on itself. And there's only a little bit of it left even now. And that's about to be gone. 